Uh, so Grant, uh, first of all then, five to two, deadline day. Um, are you spinning any plates right now for incomings or indeed outgoings? Um, yeah, we are. We are and we have, we have been and obviously we're happy with the squad and we're hoping to get a few people back. Um, we would like to bring another attacking player into the team, into the group. Um, so we are hopefully going to do that today. How confident are you between now and 11 that that will get sorted out? Uh, quietly confident, quietly confident. Obviously, there's a lot of things you've got to do to, to make it happen. So, um, you know, we're working hard in the background. Would that be a loan signing or a permanent signing? It'll be a loan, a loan from a Premier League club. Right. OK, so it's kind of the trickle-down effect, I suppose. Even on, even on today, isn't it? You're kind of waiting for, for green lights for this and that and the other. Yeah, it's difficult on deadline day because... <clears throat> There's obviously a lot of uh, plates spinning at different at different clubs, and they're waiting for players to come in, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So, um, yeah, I think I think look when this window shut, it shuts. Unfortunately for George Miller, he's going to be out for another six or seven weeks, possibly. Um, and uh, we we just need more more artillery, I think, at the top end of the pitch. So that's the reason for it. Yeah. So outgoings, even if it's some of the the younger players, maybe that just need some football elsewhere, is that a possibility? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. When players get back fit, I think that's definitely something we'll look to, to do, um, is to get some of the boys back out and alone again. Uh, just um, It's important for their own development more than anything, really. It's not that we, we don't see them as part of the, uh, the plans. It's more it's more that, <clears throat> you know, where we are as a football club. We don't have that in between 18s and 20 and, and first team. Um, so the only next option for that group is to, is to play games. So hopefully we will do that once they... Once a day settles down, and we can we can look into the national league and things like that for for some loans. I know we've well we've we've addressed injuries sadly quite a bit for obvious reasons, but between now and say Wrexham, will how how much healthier might the squad look on the injury front? It'll look healthier tomorrow um, because we'll have Tom Anderson back, we'll have Harrison Biggins back. Um, We've missed the deadline, obviously, on the new if the new signing comes in, so he won't be available tomorrow. Um, so for for them two to be back, we haven't picked anything up from the game, which is which is a real bonus for apart from young Sam Brown, uh, who felt this groin when he took the shot in the in the corner. Um, but apart from that, everyone's come through the game fine. Uh, just while we're on about injuries, then so close and Hurst, <coughs> then what's the the latest with them? They're improving. They're getting better. Uh, Kyle Hurst will be training with us early part of next week, so he'll have a full week's training. Uh, ben Close might be towards the end of the week. Um, Tom Nixon will be training with us next week. Uh, so they're the, they're the ones prominent at the minute. There was obviously an element of fatigue in such a, a brilliant performance the other night. How do you make sure that there isn't a knock-on effect for that with Swindon Town tomorrow? We just want to put the same performance on, um, build on the two performances that we've shown in the last two games, uh, and go and enjoy the game. And uh, you know, we know, listen, they've started the season quite well. So it's um, we're at home. We want to put that performance that we showed on on, on Wednesday night and Saturday, uh, and see where it takes us. Do you almost think as though the players convinced <coughs> themselves with the second half performance at MK principally? And then the performance the other night that things are moving in the right direction. Yeah, look, everything takes time, doesn't it? I've said I've said this many times. It takes time to for players to understand each other. Um, you know, to get understand each other's traits, to to understand how we want to play. It, it, it takes a bit of time, and um, like I said before, our principles will never change and haven't changed in the eight years that I've been a manager uh, in terms of how we want to work. So it does take a little bit of time for players to understand. So. Um, yep, that's where we find ourselves in the first probably month of the season. Um, but I'm hoping we've turned the tor turned the corner a little bit in terms of our performances. Is it hard to because people like me will ask things like you know bottling that type of performance and, and keeping it repetitive? But there's so many factors to it, isn't there? You know, Premier League talent and all that type of thing, and and recreating that in a sort of well after the Lord Mayor show, show scenario, which is nobody's fault, but it just is what the magic of the cup brings versus the league. Yeah, we don't think like that. We don't think like oh, that's that's for you to think about. That's for the press, the media, uh, and everybody else outside of uh, outside of our football club to think. You know, we, we think about the next game, the next performance. Um, how can we how can we go and put that performance a similar sort of performance on against <coughs> Everton, MK Dons that we did against uh, and do it again against Swindon. 
um, and see if we can get the result. But first and foremost, we've got to make sure that we're, we're ready for the game. And, well, a Swindon team that, goodness me, they could score goals as they have proven. What are you expecting from them? Um, they, they can do that. Of course, they can. We've seen a lot of their games. <clears throat> uh, so, you know, it's a, a game, it's a next game for us at home. Really, we are focused on us. Um, yes, we've seen their games and we've watched a lot about them, but um, we want to keep the focus on us and making sure that we perform. Grant, has there been an interest in players uh, of yours outgoings permanently? Is there any permanent outgoings? Yeah, that? has there been any interest on that no, front? No. no. And, that, and to be honest with you, <clears throat> if there was, that we, we always get phone calls regarding our players and would they be available and stuff like that, but there's been no firm bids for, for any of our players. Yeah. Um, would you consider paying any players off some of the guys on the transfer list? Paying them off? Uh, is it in paying up the contracts? Oh, I haven't thought about that, man. Honestly, I haven't even thought about that. So that wouldn't be a conversation for me. That's more a conversation for um, the Gavin and, and the board, really. You know, for, for us, we're just focused on what we have in the building. Um, <clears throat> you know, we've got players that's... We haven't seen for a while really. We haven't seen Rio Griffiths for two, three weeks. He's been really ill. Um, you know, so it's um, if, if that's you referring to, I don't mm. know. Um, so well, he's the most likely one, yeah, isn't he? Yeah. So uh, we we haven't seen him, and, and, and it is what it is. Unfortunately, he, he's ill at the minute, and we, we wish him wish him well. Um, and then we've got other long term injuries. So um, we do we do have a biggie squad, but when you look at it and you look you peel it back a little bit, there's a lot of. Uh, there's a lot of people in there that's been, been here over previous managers and stuff like that. And um, look, in time, we wanted to create, we want to try and create our own group um, of players that we believe in. Yeah, the young lad that may or may not be coming in. Uh, well, I presume he's a young lad. That was my going to be my question. If he's coming from a yeah, no, club, very, the one you know, we've got options, but we're very close on one, and and it's the number one target that we've we've went for in this in this window. Um, uh, you know, it's it was really just a decision last week. We felt that. Uh, the way we are at the minute and how we're playing, we, we probably could do with another another body in that area. Um, one that can play as a nine, play as a ten, be clever, can drive at people, can travel at people um, <clears throat> and score goals. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, we've had some really good options, you know, and, and clubs wanting to help us, which is great. Um, so uh, we're hoping it can it can get done very soon. Yeah, is he someone that you've had to wait on then? Is he this this target? Yeah, we've we had to because of injuries at their at their own club. So he's been involved in uh, in and around their first team. Uh, you mentioned to Andy obviously there's not really that transition team. Well, there's not a twenty threes team or a pathway at the minute. Is that something you look to bring back in time? You would like to? Maybe. I mean, look at the minute where we are. We are in, the, in this level, and um, <clears throat> you know, over the if I'm here for, for years to come, which I hope I am, that may be something we could we could get to. But at this, at this moment in time, we, we have the 18s and then we have the first team. And it's a big gap, jumping from 18s to first team mm -hmm. level. Um, so when we have 18s excelling, like you see with young Will, Will Flint at the minute, out along at Gainsborough and doing really well, we try and get them out as quickly as we can. But it's there's always a worry when you've got that middle gap, <clears throat> you know, that people like the likes of, just to mention maybe two, there are three, Jack De Gucci, Jack Goodman, Tavonga Kalea, they're just in between, you know, um, in between at the minute. So having them out playing football is, is important. I know we called the two forward players back, but we had to because of the numbers. Um, but once we get players back, we'll get them straight back out again to, to men's football. Yeah, after Everton, have you noticed a bit of a bounce about the place? Because it, it was a performance with plenty of credibility. I noticed a very tired group of players on, on Thursday when we came in. Mm -hmm. um, some of them didn't sleep, but that's just the way it is after the game sometimes. You know, the adrenaline and, and stuff like that. So we've been, we've been very diligent in terms of what we've done in the last couple of days. Um, managed to get some recovery into them on, on Thursday. Um, some yoga and some, some bike and some swimming and stuff like that and, and particularly the team played and then today we worked a wee bit more on tactical, tactical stuff for, for tomorrow's game Yeah, I know it is what it is you've got to play tomorrow but how much of a, a challenge is it to get them going again to put together a performance that can beat Swindon? Yeah, we have to We have to. It's, there's no getting away from it. we have to do that we have to, we have to show the same the same performance same levels same energies um, good thing tomorrow you know I'm looking at my bench tomorrow and I'm looking at them thinking I've got options, I've got things to change it, um, which is good with players coming back. Um, so hopefully over, over time, over the next week or two, we're going to even got to get stronger in that as well. And uh, that's where I want to be. I want to be in a, in a position where I'm having to leave people off the bench. I think that's when you feel 
you know, you're, you're telling them why they're not involved. That's that's uh, that's when I feel we're at our, our, our strongest. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to pick up on Owen Bailey as someone who's played three different positions already. <coughs> uh, commendable versatility, and it doesn't seem like it seems to affect his performance phenomenal, levels either. Phenomenal, phenomenal character. Honestly, he's a warrior, absolute warrior. It doesn't it doesn't matter where you ask him to play, he plays it with great aplomb, and uh, he's a he's a tremendous tremendous player as well. You know, I, th I don't think he gave Dan Juma a kick for seventy minutes the other night. And the one time we let him in on the far side, and that wasn't Owen Bailey, or, but I'm just saying, us as a team, the one time we let him in, he scored. So um, wherever he plays, right back, outstanding a whole centre midfield, he's been brilliant. And I've spoken about him before. Um, and maybe after a Nuts County game, I said how, how well his performance was. And then you see him at right side centre half uh, and joining in from there. So his, his first Attili was one of the big things why we brought him here, because um, he's played in all them positions for Gateshead. But he's a yeah, he's a top kid. He's mm. no no hassle. Comes in, trains to his maximum every single day. Goes absolutely nowhere the nowhere near the physio room, <laughs> and uh, just gets on with his work. Yeah, another one who's probably caught the eye, Jack Senior. He's outside as well. Good non-league find. Again, very very good, very very good character. Excellent character. Again, plays in numerous positions. It's a position he's played on Halifax last year that he's that he's playing at the minute. Um, captain of Halifax, so it tells you a bit about his mentality. Um, so. I think the last two games he's been really good, really positive in terms of his play and uh, hopefully that can continue.